you can have a different collections of keys. Uh, and those collections uh, can handle multiple, uh, can store multiple unique keys. Keys means uh, unique strings that have unique identifiers. Here, we give you a brief example of how to use our command line tool and our API to upload those keys into the platform. And instead of uploading just one document in a particular format, translating that and downloading that back in that exact format, now you can import your strings in multiple formats into the same, can merge them into the same collection of keys, work with them on the platform, and then export them in multiple formats as well. So an example here would be you can maintain a single list of strings or keys uh, inside SmartCat. You can add them on the platform as well, and then you can export them in JSON format for your web application, in Android XML for your Android app, in strings format for your iOS application, and so on. So you can have a single source of record, single source of truth for all of your content when it comes to product strings. You can use your um, like visual import and export tool to uh, import strings initially. And by the way, you can not only import the source strings, but also translations. Uh, but also when you are done with importing the strings, uh, ultimately the goal, and this is what uh, what developers asked uh, us about, uh, was to quickly integrate that with their CI CD uh, processes. And this is where the command line tool comes into place. So I will show you how to import things using our uh, UI and then also demonstrate how to work with our command line tools. Here, uh, you can specify, first of all, uh, you can specify the collection. You can create new collections uh, right away. When you're using command line tool, you can also create new collections uh, from the same invocation of the import. You just say the new name of the collection. It will be automatically created. You can specify the file format that you will be importing. You can uh, specify how to resolve conflicts. So if the key already exists in that collection, should it be overwritten or should we keep the existing one in SmartCat? You can also add labels. That's also something new uh, that is specific to software organization projects. You can add some, um, you can add any sorts of labels. You can also create labels based on file names. So if you're uh, file is named strings.json, we will create the corresponding label um, based on that. So then you can later export just the strings related that were originating from that file. And then you can upload the files themselves. So let me open the example files here for software localization. So I'll selecting strings.json and say that this um, this JSON is in English, and also I can upload directly the uh, Spanish translation, and I'll just need to specify that this is in Spanish. And once the import is done, um, we will import source keys and also map translations to them. Here the import was completed. Again, we're showing you how you would use the same um, kind of set of settings, but from your uh, command line tool. So we're giving you like an instant dynamic help on how to use our command line interface. So once that is done, you can see that you have eight keys uh, already in that collection. And we can open Spanish, for example, and see how that looks like from the uh, editor perspective. These were the keys that were imported. Um, I can briefly show you the original file here as well, just to give you an idea what was the source here. It was a pretty simple uh, set of keys. These are unique keys and uh, their values. And Spanish also has some keys, uh, but it had less keys than in English. So we imported the translations in Spanish where we could. And for some of the keys uh, that there were no translations, they're still kept untranslated. Uh, as I mentioned before, in software localization projects, you can also edit the source, which is great uh, if you want to use SmartCat as a source of truth. For example, you initially import the uh, the keys, the strings from different sources that you currently have, and then you want to maintain those strings 
insights market and just export them when you're building your, your uh, product. You can edit the sources or you can add new keys here as well. So I'm just adding some new key and I give it um, a unique identifier as well and I can save that. I can also create plural forms. So in software acquisition projects, we support plurals, uh, which means that you can uh, create those plural forms and then export them in all of the formats. They will be uh, formatted as ICU message format uh, strings, which basically is the de facto standard of handling plurals and all like conditional formatting when it comes to plurals. And those are supported across uh, pretty much all of the platforms um, and programming languages. So this is just a brief overview. Now, when it comes to command line interface, what you do here is you install our command line tool and you can, uh, if you go back to the project, I will show you that there is a link here that leads to the documentation about everything related to software acquisition projects and also how to use our command line tool and how to use our API. And once you have it installed, you can use it from the command line by just typing in SmartCat. It gives you an instant help of what are the uh, commands. So you can, for example, use SmartCat import, SmartCat export. You can also get help in line when you're typing in SmartCat import minus minus help. And it will give you the list of all of the available options if you want to use them. Uh, setting up command line tool is pretty simple. Uh, you are providing in your project, uh, you are providing certain like credentials linked to the project name to workspace. And you can also use SmartCat um, to uh, kind of authenticate uh, against, um, against our platform so that your API key is stored securely. And once you have that, Basically, you don't have to provide uh, the ID of the project every time you are running some import or export command. You can run more simple commands. For example, um, here, this is the command. You can say smartcat export. I want to export just the English language. And I want to output that uh, into out folder and create a file called strings.json. Um, and this is the format that I want to use. So if I run this, it will do, do the export and you will see that we create this folder structure and we export the strings, the keys back. This means again that you can maintain your list of keys on the platform. You can also plug in, uh, as I mentioned before, briefly mentioned before, uh, Figma as a source of design. So you can export the keys from your Figma designs into those software organization projects. And all you need to do in order to build your multilingual product is periodically export both source keys and translations and use them in your CI/CD builds. So this concludes my demo of this part. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them right now. You can put them into QA section. All right. Um, Okay, so uh, if there are no questions, uh, but we will go on with other topics. And basically, if you have any other questions about this specific topic, uh, we can definitely cover that. You don't have to uh, really end till the end of. I think we have something in. Okay, okay. So. Uh... Kuma, I think I pronounced your name correctly, asks, what happens uh, if I don't know how to do um, what, uh, with what you just demonstrated? Do you provide the support? Of course. Um, so here is a very brief, you know, we're just like jumping through different topics, just giving you a glimpse of what we have so that you have more questions, right? Now, if you want to set up your software projects or if you want to use uh, other functions that we'll be talking about today, um, you can definitely contact us and you can even probably provide your um, your your email here and we can contact you later. And uh, we can set up a specific session where we'll understand your needs 
you will tell us what you want to achieve and we will say how to apply this better uh, using SmartCAD um, technology. All right. So next topic would be use of uh, GPT in our AI actions. So um, I will briefly show how that works as well. But before we do, again, jump to the demo, um, like a brief overview of what we what we have and where we're heading to in terms of using uh, AI functionality, generative AI, and GPT on our platform. So right now we have two ways to use specifically OpenAI GPT engine inside SmartCAD. These are first you can set up a uh, special, what we called machine translation engine profile based on GPT and use that for automatic translation of all of your content. So this is done if you want to pre-translate everything using GPT and then use post editing to, um, you know, to make some tweaks to review what was generated. Some caveats are as with like GPT as a technology in general, first, it's a bit slower than traditional AI translation using engines like Google, DeepL, uh, etc. And second, sometimes, well, I would say it, it requires more attention from your end. So uh, it is needed to have human in the loop who can review the translations. The second uh, thing that we have is an ability to apply certain uh, text transformations right away uh, within uh, within your translation environment. And this is really helpful if you want to quickly rephrase or shorten your text, etc. So let me share my screen again, and I will uh, navigate you through how you set up uh, those AI actions and set up your machine translation uh, engine profiles based on GPT and how you would be using them. All right, so this is your home screen and you have, as an admin, you have uh, access to your workspace settings. When you go here, you have a list of empty engine presets. Now, right now, ability to edit presets is something that is available for our Unite and Enterprise customers. Uh, we give you trials if you want to test this functionality. So if you are interested in that, feel free to reach out to us. Again, we'll give you a personalized demo, understand your needs. We'll enable this as a part of the trial on your account. Now, um, here I have lots of experiments with different actions and uh, GPT-based translation engines. But we, by default, and this does not require any uh, like Unite or Enterprise subscription, we give you the default engine, which is called GPT-4, and we give you a list of default actions that you can also use. So um, as an admin, you, I can go inside and edit that. And what I have here is an ability to tweak uh, or completely change the system prompt that instructs GPT of what to do with my content. And below, I also have a playground, which allows me to quickly see how that uh, how that works. We support two uh, different models, GPT 3.5, GPT 4. GPT 3.5 uh, is much faster, but sometimes you may see that GPT 4 on certain language pairs can be more accurate. So it really depends on uh, your specific use case. If you find that GPT 3.5 does a good job for you, then that's totally fine to use that. And I think you'll see uh, quite a boost of, um, you know, in terms of uh, translation speed. So here, as with all large language models, GPT included, you provide a system prompt that says what you want to do, uh, what kind of output do you want to have. And by default, we're providing this prompt, which we automatically replace, like place, uh, here, placeholders, we automatically replace with your actual source language in your project and your target language. And then also um, here we provide the actual source text in your in your segment. Um, let's try something. So 
we can translate from English into into Spanish. And I'll provide some. This is a test. I'm not feeling creative too much today, but um, that should work. Um, in certain uh, in certain uh, cases, when you are using a actions, we can not only use source text in your segment as as an input uh, for that, but also get the current target text and change that. So sometimes uh, you want to provide target text, but for translation, it's just uh, providing the source. And as you run it. Uh, Basically, we substitute this particular placeholder with English. So we say, you're a translator from English to Spanish. Your entire response must be translation. And this is your test uh, text. And we get and give you the output. Now, the interesting part uh, here is that for like general, general purpose translation, it's all defined to use GPT as well. Sometimes it gives a really interesting results. Um, but you can also steer that in certain directions. And here, for example, a quick tweak here is that I used pretty much the same prompt, but I said that translate their speech from a female's perspective. So in that case, if I'm translating a book where like the main characters is a female and there is a lot of direct speech there, I can say that I would want to use that profile to translate, like pre-translate that book. And it will mean that the translations will be much closer to the final output. You'll have to do less, you know, smaller edits here and there. So uh, speaking of, and then again, uh, this is a unique name that is given to that profile. And it means that wherever you have uh, an ability to provide your machine translation engine um, in, in, um, in project settings, you can specify that you want to translate particular uh, language pair using that engine that will expose. Um, I can quickly show where it is located, but again, um, if you want to use that, we are more than happy to give you a much more in-depth overview of how to set up things, how to set up projects, etc. So if I go into the same project that I uh, demonstrated to you before uh, with software localization, and I go into settings. I'm sorry, not here, uh, into linguistic assets. Uh, you can see that we have this machine translation section. And all of those prompts, all of those like virtual uh, translation engines that I created previously are available for me. So now I can say, okay, I want to translate Spanish uh, using that particular, uh, that particular profile. So you can really have multiple of them for multiple purposes, tweak to very specific things that you uh, that you want to achieve, tested them in this playground environment, and then use them on a project by project basis. Now uh, let's uh, quickly go back to the uh, configuration screen, and I will show you um, AI actions. They are configured the same way, uh, but they are exposed as AI action. So for example, here I have the shorten action. And what it does first, um, I say that I want to enable this as an editor action. I give it a short name. This will be a button caption in the editor UI. I will show you that. And I say what to do with the text and with which text I want to uh, run this against. So here we'll be running against the target text that's already in the uh, already translated. And I want to make it shorter, that's it. So. Again, uh, we can provide something, um, I don't know, English to English doesn't matter, I think, here, because we're only working on the target text. And I will take some of that text, probably just copy that over from the UI so I don't have to type it in, and then run that prompt. So it should take the target text and produce a smaller output if it can. Um, in the context of the editor, uh, you will get your target text in the segment replaced by, um, by that value. Okay, it takes a bit longer than I expected. Probably doesn't like that we're translating from English to English in this playground. 
let's probably move over to uh, to the cat editor uh, where this should work in the context of the editor itself. So let me go here. I won't do any changes here. So when you open the editor, uh, you will see that you have um, a special toolbar button that allows you to access those actions. This is the one. So opening it shows you all of the available actions. And again, I have lots of different experimentation here. So um, I can click on any of the segments and say rephrase or shorten or apply something else. And now it replaced something in place for me. And you can see in the history, what were the changes. So it does some tweaks. Again, I don't speak Spanish. I don't know how good or bad the new language is. But the idea is that sometimes if you write some something creative, some translate some marking text, you want to see things in a bit different manner. You can run this rephrase multiple times and see the output of the system and then choose which one is the best, at least as a starting point for you to, to make the final tweaks. So that's pretty much it. Um, on this topic. Again, if you have any questions about uh, using GPT actions in SmartCAD, feel free to ask. All right, uh, we have a question uh, from uh, whom again. So thanks so much for being active today. Uh, do you have a guide for users which indicates which machine translation engine provide the highest level of accuracy? For example, if I need an English to uh, Amharic translation, which engine would be the best to use for that translation? DeepL, Google Translate, Microsoft Translate, or something else? So that's a great question. Um, well, there are some publicly available research on you know um, performance of different engines for different uh, language pairs. We internally use an algorithm that automatically selects the best engine from our perspective. Uh, based on your source and target language. So if you go into SmartCAD today and start a translation from English to Amharic, we will pick up the pick the translation engine that we believe is the best. You can look up what we selected as the best translation engine um, for your project. And well, you can experiment also with different projects, uh, with different settings, with different machine translation engines and see if it's actually uh, good or bad. Now, there is no single, like the, the best translation engine when it comes to language pair. It really depends on your subject, like general purpose versus like medical or something else. So it really depends on your on your specific case. But we do have this ability to automatically like pre-select the um, most appropriate, from our perspective, most appropriate translation engine um, when you are creating a new project. All right. If there are no more questions, I think we can move on to the next topic. And I think, Jean-Luc, this was yours, right? Um, I don't have the yes. agenda before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'll, I'm going to demo the uh, articulate workflow. You know, so uh, perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Igor. Okay, so I will uh, share my screen. What uh, what we want to show you today uh, in this quick demo is uh, the workflow that you would have if you use Articulate. We have a lot of customers using uh, Articulate Wise for their uh, LND content, and on our side, you know, we've uh, we've on uh, we understand from a lot of them that they have a lot of frustration sometimes, you know, processing files from Articulate, and but we think we have a very good solution. You know, we have a lot of users right now using uh, SmartCut to translate their LND content very successfully. So let me show you the way that it works and also maybe explain to you a little bit some of the things that we've done on our side, you know, to uh, to make it uh, easier. So I'm uh, logged in right now into Articulate 360. I have a, a small uh, a course right here, file format supported by uh, SmartCut. There are only just like, you know, three lessons in there, nothing very complicated, very easy content. You know, I think even one of my contents actually has a video. And I think uh, further, uh, one of the uh, next uh, uh, presentation 
Igor will show you how to process videos uh, uh, in uh, in SmartCut. You know, very very interesting. But that's uh, one of the questions that we have very often. It's like, you know, I have multimedia content in my L and D content. You know, how can I process that? And we have a solution for that in SmartCut as well. So what I'm going to do, the way the system works with the articulate, is that I will go to my uh, uh, content and then I will make a copy. You know, of this uh, course. You know, so I want to keep. You know, the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the original in this case that would be in English, and I say, for example, I want to have like you know a Spanish version of uh, this uh, course. I'm just going to uh, create a copy, rename it, you know, uh, as needed, duplicate it, and then once I have this uh, uh, duplicated course, I will then open the course itself, and then I will uh, extract you know the content that needs to be translated. This is done by going into the uh, settings menu of the course. And you see, I have an option to export an XLIF file. So I would export an XLIF file right here into my uh, system, you know, and then I will be able to process this XLIF file. If you have multimedia content, you will need to uh, get have access to, to your uh, videos, to audio, you know, uh, or you can export it also from, uh, for example, from a, a, uh, the courses themselves. Now I'm going to go to SmartCat. And I'm going to create a project uh, to uh, translate this XLIF file. So I'm going to click on my shortcut on my uh, uh, workspace, create the project, and then I'm just going to give this project a uh, name. You know, so for example, in this case, you can specify a deadline here, and I have uh, specified my uh, source language and my target language. Uh, with uh, if you translate articulate files, you work with uh, one language uh, at a time for each of those XLIF files. Although we have ways to process multiple languages at the same time. And then you choose a workflow, you know, that's going to, uh, that could uh, involve automatic transition in this case, or manual transitions up to you. But uh, most of our customers are moving to an automatic transition workflow with also post editing a human in the loop here. I'm going to create the project. And this is all you really have to do. Uh, remember, uh, Igor mentioned to you that uh, with SmartCat, you have an algorithm that runs in the background that chooses the best possible. Uh, uh, automatic transition engine. You don't have to do any of those settings. Uh, we also manage your uh, transition memories automatically. If you have transition memories, you know, so you still don't have to worry about, you know, uh, uh, managing all the linguistic assets when you create projects. So now I have a uh, file that's uh, been uh, that I downloaded from Articulate. I'm just gonna uh, upload it uh, here in SmartCat, and then we're gonna translate this uh, document. So this is my uh, 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 XLIF file. You can see that in SmartCat, what we've done is we actually uh, uh, we're parsing those uh, rise XLIF uh, very specifically. The reasons for the reason for this is that uh, XLIF files created by Articulate actually split the content by paragraphs, which is not always ideal when it comes to translation. You know, uh, first of all, it's uh, you don't get as good matches uh, from the transition memory. And second of all, it also means that very often you end up with a lot of formatting uh, content in those paragraphs, which does actually lead to a lot of errors uh, when using other tools. You know, so this is uh, uh, where, where I think we have a lot of success processing those extra files by uh, changing the way that we actually parse the documents. You know, so you don't have to worry about any of the other uh, options right here. The default is definitely uh, perfectly fine. I'm going to click on finish. And then I'm going to have a uh, document that's being processed. You can see automatic transition is in progress right now. It's going to take maybe uh, just like, you know, a couple of seconds to finish. I don't remember how big the file is, you know, so, but uh, you can also track progress by going into the file section, which is going to show you, you know, a little by little, you know, where the process is. And you can see right now the document has been uh, fully translated. Now, the next thing that you would do would be to, you know, uh, either you can export the file as is, you know, without adding uh, any human post editing, or you can also simply uh, uh, have uh, one of your colleagues, someone, you know, or, or, or some, uh, a translator that you worked with in the past, you know, simply assign the task, you know, to uh, to them and they will review the output of the automatic transition, make whatever corrections is needed. Uh, we have another little presentation about uh, uh, the, uh, the total workflow. For now, we're simply concerned about uh, returning this XLIF file back into uh, uh, SmartCat. Just to show you quickly in the editor what uh, these XLIF files are going to look like, you know, uh, Eager just uh, give you some little bit of demonstrations about like, you know, using the uh, even the AI actions. 
you know, so you can see here, it's very, very clean inside of SmartCAD. You don't have to worry too much about formatting, which could be very different if you were to import, for example, four paragraphs rather than sentences, you know, so you have a very clean output in the, in the editor, very easy for the translators to work with, you know, so. Let me go back into uh, the project. And what I will do is I will then export the Excel file and we're going to try to import it back into uh, Articulate. So here I have like, you know, uh, my uh, uh, file here that's ready to uh, to be translated, you know, so I'm going to download it. And then I'm going to go back into Articulate. And very simply, you know, there's an option here to import translated text, you know, so I'm going to click on import translated text and I'm going to navigate to the, 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 uh, the directory where I have my translated XLIF files. And you can see here, this is the one right here. That's the exact, it's an XLIF file that has an uh, English, uh, Spanish extension. Now the import is successful. You can see no problems. And now my course is actually in Spanish. You know, the, uh, some of the, uh, issues that we've heard uh, from, uh, other users is that sometimes when you try to reimport this XLIF file, you know, they generate errors. Uh, and we noticed that on our side, you know, because of the way that we process the files, uh, those uh, XLIF translated files actually uh, uh, import uh, without any uh, uh, issues whatsoever. So you can see now uh, the content, you know, has been translated into uh, into Spanish. Now there's then there hasn't been any uh, editing, you know, done uh, in SmartCat. You know, that's obviously I was telling you that's an option you can have either use the uh, automatic translation, the AI translation as is, or just have someone edit it. But you can see the content is translated to into Spanish uh, in the entire document. You know, so that's uh, that was a very easy way to uh, to uh, process uh, the document. So this is really the way that we work. You know, with SmartCat and uh, LND content created by our Articulate Wise. You can see very very simple. The document is not translated. You still maintain the copy in, in, in English if you want to translate it to other uh, uh, languages. So I don't know if there are any questions, but this is pretty much what uh, we can show here uh, regarding the uh, processing of uh, documents using uh, SmartCat. If there are no questions, Igor, I think we can move to the next uh, presentation. I think you wanted to go over the translation of videos, correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Jean -Luc. Um, one, one comment, Jean Luc, if I may, just before we go to that. So, part of the reason why the process is like that with Articulate is because of the way Articulate itself is constructed, right? So, for other platforms, we've got a much more direct and seamless integration, but Articulate has limitations on direct integration. So, it does require, for example, that the file be downloaded, edited. It's correct. Right. Yeah, that is correct. There is no integration at the moment with Articulate, you know, but the, the difference that we make at SmartCat is we make the processing of the files much more seamless, you know. So again, what we've heard from other users was that uh, processing, re-importing those extra files after they were translated generated errors, frustration very often, you know. And in fact, I know we know for a fact that uh, I think the Articulate support team recommends using SmartCat for translating your their XLIF files, you know, so which coming from them, I think it's a pretty good recommendation, I would say. Eager. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, article derives is an interesting topic. We do see a lot of interest from our clients and the fact that uh, we are recommended as a go-to tool for translation by article rise support, that's, that tells you something. Um, again, you have to do some manual steps on the article rise side to create a copy of your course, export things, import the translations back. We can always demonstrate that to you in a like larger detail in the personal section where you can ask your questions directly, maybe even uh, do that on your content and guide you through that process so you can you can see the output um, you know based, based on your uh, based on your content and not our demo one. All right. Um, I will be talking next about uh, media translation. So, when it comes to uh, our clients, they always ask us to support uh, video translation as a, again, much smoother experience for them, uh, especially when it comes to translating uh, translating learning materials and in articulate rise and um, storyline and other formats, you always, like most uh, often than not, you have video content as a part of your course. 
So uh, translating video is one of the hot topics at the moment in the industry, and that's something that we also are doing in SmartCat. So <clears throat> uh, how do we support a media localization? So until uh, recently, I would say until a few quarters ago, uh, we would just have an ability for you guys to upload uh, subtitle files themselves, uh, which is SRT files and VTT files. Uh, then we added an option to give you a visual overview, a preview of your subtitles on top of the video, if you upload the video itself. Uh, what we added recently, as recently as of today, uh, is an ability to not only, well, first, ability to upload videos and then have them transcribed. That's something that we added about a month ago. So even if you are uh, an avid SmartCat user, that might be uh, still a new functionality to you, but you can upload the videos directly onto the platform. We will be transcribing them. And basically you will have subtitles plus the video already uploaded in one step, which again is a huge benefit and a time saver when you are translating videos. What we added today is an ability to export the video with burned in subtitles, which means you are not downloading subtitles separately and then figuring out how to combine them, how to lay them, layer them, them on top of the video or using some um, you know, tools that the platform may or may not provide, but you can get the final video with subtitles burned in as part of the video feed itself. So you can just open them or share the video uh, anywhere and you will be guaranteed or your visitors, your users um, will be guaranteed that the, they can see that um, file the subtitles. So I'll share my screen once again and demonstrate how that looks like in the UI. So I have created this project. Uh, for the sake of the demo, uh, uploading the files might take uh, a minute or so. So uh, I will not be showing how to upload the video itself. I will show you how to um, upload the uh, VTD files. But I have a project where I uploaded the uh, two VTD files uh, with subtitles extracted from elsewhere and also the um, reference uh, MP4 files, the videos. And when you go into those uh, those files in the editor, what you currently have is an ability to edit content, of course, but also you have an ability to preview your content. And initially, when you upload the video, this is how it looks like. So it's just the subtitles without the video itself. But now you can select the video for preview. You can upload the file directly from the preview. Or if you already have that uploaded as I have in my uh, in my project, I can select the appropriate video file to link that to that uh, VTT file. So once I link that, you can see uh, that this video appears. We're showing you all of the uh, translated content. By the way, you can toggle between live preview. Um, so uh, without live preview, you'll be viewing just the source content. And with live preview, you will be getting the translations. And as you are typing in uh, your translations, you can see that they will be immediately reflected in this preview pane and also as an actual uh, subtitle rendered on top of the video. So this gives you an instant feedback and it's great to understand how your video will look like even before downloading that. Now, if you hover over your uh, preview, we'll be even giving you the uh, speed at which you should be you um, you should be reading those captions. So, twelve uh, characters per second, per second, nineteen, etc. And if there are certain things that you need to uh, you know read very fast, we'll show that in orange and in red color. We'll also highlight certain uh, cues that are appearing on the screen for um, less than a second. So again, you will see uh, what are the potential issues are with your um, with your subtitling process. Now you can play back the file. Uh, we will be this is this is not translated over Zoom, but you will be hearing the original audio. You will be seeing how the um, cues change themselves, and if you want to make things shorter or longer. And this is where AI actions that allow you to do. And to shorten the text really come handy when it, when it comes to translating your subtitles. Now, um, 
with those uh, subtitles uh, uploaded directly, you can up, you can download them uh, in the same format back. Uh, what you can now do also, let me go back to the project to select another file. You can upload the video file directly. And when, uh, when you have it uploaded, it will appear just as a file, like here is the MP4 file available for uh, translation. We will automatically do the transcription, extract the text, and again, um, make the same editing experience available. Now, what you will see here is a little bit different um, rendering with those squiggle lines. Uh, what this means is we now have two ways of processing your cues. Um, first, in your subtitles, you can have just the line, like line by line, exactly as it appears on the video file. And you can work in that mode when you're uploading the um, subtitle files into the platform. Now we have that option. But also, uh, this is our kind of default scenario. Uh, what we do, we reconstruct the whole sentences and uh, recombine them into, into segments. So for example, here, you can see that this is how the um, sentences are split into multiple parts in uh, in cues, in subtitles. But here we do reconstruct them as a whole sentence. So it's first uh, more easy for you to work with, especially when it comes to languages like Japanese where the word ordering is different in the sentence. But also it allows you to apply uh, machine translation better because again, it works against the whole sentence. It's up to you how you want to process your files when you're uploading them directly. Um, again, we now have an option to select either uh, like default behavior where we combine them uh, into whole sentences, or if you want to exactly follow uh, the cues that are in this title file. Now, this is the interesting part. When you have your media file transcribed, available for translation, translated, uh, you can now download uh, not only the uh, subtitles file themselves, but you can also download an MP4 with burned-in subtitles. So that's a new option. It's available in the editor or also from the um, from the file list. So uh, let me export the uh, MP4 with confirmed translations, and I have all the translations confirmed. So first of all, before doing this. Uh, like video production process, which can be time consuming for different videos. It can take like 10 or more minutes. We're giving you an instant preview of how the frames will look like and how the text on top of them will look like. So this is not the um, like simulation of the subtitling process as you see in the preview in the editor. This is actually the frames, the pixels of your video, uh, exactly as you will get them. And even before starting the video export, you can kind of go through this um, slide deck, if you will, uh, and see if everything goes good. If there's no word wrapping, if there's like too, not too long of a text that doesn't fit properly, if all captures are legible, etc. Uh, later on, uh, we plan to give you some customization options, like making your font a little bit bigger, smaller, different color, etc. Uh, but right now, you'll at least see what your end result will look like. And when you're ready, when you see that everything looks good, you can start the video export. And while you sit back and relax, we will be guiding you through that slide deck basically and show how the process works, uh, give you some uh, estimation of when this uh, process will be completed. And at the end, uh, you will get the video file that you uploaded back as a video file. So that gives you this much easier, much smoother video in video out experience that you previously didn't have in SmartCat. And in the end, you'll have a video file that will work everywhere. So we went through this process uh, and we uh, and you have your file downloaded. Now, if you open that file in the browser, I'll just, I'll just mute it so it doesn't interfere uh, with what I'm saying. Basically, you will see that this is the video that was combined and uh, it should have all of the subtitles. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it.
So this really makes it much easier for you guys to embed those translated videos uh, or just share them with, with your audience. And we're really excited about this feature. So uh, looking forward for you to use that and to um, provide your, your feedback. And Igor, it's not just, by the way, just videos, but also we have people that process MP3 that get transcribed, translated, you know, so we give the option to work with different multimedia uh, formats, right? Yes, yes. So, so yeah, uh, of course, you can upload the audio file. It will get transcribed. Of course, you cannot render this as a video. It doesn't make sense. But um, you can still have this ability to automatically extract all of the text and have it translated. So, that yeah, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions about this topic? If not, uh, then we can probably move on. Uh, the next uh, is about AI human workflows. I think we can partially share that between you, uh, Jean-Luc and myself. I can quickly demonstrate uh, how you can set up multi-stage workflows, but if you want to add something, please chime in. Does make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so here what we described uh, is a very basic uh, process where you just do the MT, which is great for, for demos or when you have content that um, all, need, all it needs is just machine translation. But uh, what makes SmartCat really great is that in the same platform, you can create efficient AI translation plus human workflows. And what I mean by that is uh, when you go when you are creating a new project, uh, you can specify what kind of workflows do you want to have. If we go, for example, into projects and create a new project, like this one, so we create a project. You can always fully translate the document using AI, but if you want customized workflows, this is where you go. You create a project, and here we give you certain uh, predefined uh, workflow steps, and we explain which steps they are. So this is translation is just for human translation alone. This is automatic translation and post editing. I think this is the most popular choice uh, that our clients make because it combines the speed of automatic translation, uh, the quality of human translation, and it reduces your costs. What it means is that creating a project with this template gives you two workflow steps. The first one using AI translation to pre-translate all of your content, and then you have post-editing to uh, review all of your translations. You can create multiple uh, workflow steps like classic TEP uh, process with editing and proofreading. Uh, you can always combine that with AI translation. Uh, this is the uh, AI translation alone. I think that was the custom template that I made. Um, so if you don't have that, you can always go and create your custom template at some stage and um, and name that. And in the future, you will be able to reuse that. By the way, we also have project templates. So you can first create your desired workflow, which involves AI and human translation, and then create a project template that you can use to quickly create projects based on that. So I'll go back and instead of creating a new project with, with those templates, I will change my project. So basically what I mean here is that you can always add a new step as you need. Here in my project, for the sake of the demo, I started with just one workflow step and this was, you know, uh, automatic translation. So if I go to the project settings into workflow, you can see that we have this translation step. Uh, and we have automatic translation enabled and it runs automatically uh, on this step. But then we can say, okay, uh, we want to add some post editing here and I can click save. And now what I have is a two stage process, um, a project with two uh, stages of workflow. Translation has been complete or almost fully complete uh, depending on um, what was before in, in, in this first stage, but that second post-editing stage is now available for translation. And if I, as a manager, go into any of those um, documents, just to, just to show you how that looks like from the manager's perspective, you will see that right now, 
we have uh, segments that are at the first translation stage, so they need to be confirmed at the translation stage first and at post-editing, but some are already confirmed at translation stage and only need post-editing. What that means for you as a manager is that now you can assign someone to that second stage and have everything reviewed. And if I go back to the project, this is uh, where you do that. I can go into tasks. And here we show you, okay, so uh, we have the first uh, stage and then we have that second stage, which is post editing. So uh, post editing from English into Spanish. This is the number of files. This is number of words that need to be um, to be reviewed. You can set a deadline, if you will, and also invite someone. And here you can invite from a pool of freelancers that are available on our platform, and we will uh, find you, um, kind of suggest you some of the freelancers based on their rating, based on their availability, based on their price per word. You can work with agencies and invite them. Some of them provide uh, rates right away. Some of them will go through like more formal, uh, like ordering uh, process and quote, uh, quotation process. You can also invite anyone into your team specifically and then assign them. Uh, or you can invite people right from this, uh, from this UI. So this gives you an ability to do quick translation first, assign someone to do the review. Review happens at a lower rate and it's much faster. So you'll have more throughput basically through the system. And in the end, you will still have quality translation uh, but that the fraction of the cost and the fraction of uh, of time. I think it's important, Igor, to also mention that when we suggest people from the marketplace, it's not just their ratings, but we have also a machine learning algorithm that runs in the background that compares the content that is being translated to content that was translated by these freelancers in the past. You know, and we match the best possible freelancers with your content, you know, to make sure that you have the result, you know, the quality that you're that you're looking for and also people that have the subject matter expertise. So. Yeah, that's a great point. This is exactly about the, this practical application of AI that we talked about in, in one of the previous sessions where we do compare your content. And yeah, that's one of the criteria why we're surfacing up a specific freelancer. This means that in the past they worked on a similar topic and they have a much better chance to deliver quality results. Exactly. So. I think, uh, Igor, maybe, uh, it might be interesting to maybe like we talk about those different freelancers, if we could show maybe how people can uh, access our marketplace, you know, and then look at freelancers and also what we offer, you know, as far as like, you know, uh, uh, marketplace delivery help assistance, you know, so when you create projects, you know, you might not want, you might not have people in your team that are qualified, you know, to search for translators. You might not have people that are qualified to screen, you know, the the uh, the translators. But in SmartCat, first we help you with this machine learning algorithm, and then we also have a, you know, a team of experts working in the background, you know, to help you, you know, to guide you during the uh, during the process as well. So, yeah, um, maybe maybe you can share something because I don't think I have everything configured in my account when it comes to working with Marketplace. So that would be helpful if you could. If you go, uh, probably if you go to, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Yes. And so, uh, sure. I have my screen again. And, uh, for example, you know, uh, we were talking about like, you know, finding translators into the marketplace. Like I'm looking into our marketplace right now, and you can see that I'm looking for people who translate from English into Italian, you know, native language. And you can see that from there, you'll be able to see translators that match, you know, your requirements in this case, just a language. And you can also choose like, you know, people that have a specific subject matter. So for example, I want someone, you know, that has like experience with business, you know, and you will have all the information from these people, like, you know, their ratings, how many words they've translated to the platforms, you know, how many projects they've done, their price per word, you know, you have a lot of different things that you can do here, you know, and I know that was a question that was asked by one of our uh, uh, customers yesterday. What happens if I find someone into the marketplace and I'm really happy with, you know, these people, you know, SmartCat, we help you, we, we help you manage your team, you know, uh, efficiently. Like for example, I'm saying Christian here, 
you know, would be a good person potentially for some of my projects. And you can see, first of all, what I can do is I can directly message, you know, Christian and ask him, for example, if he would be comfortable with a specific topic or specific, like, you know, uh, deadline. And what I can do is I can also add him to my team. I could say, okay, you know, uh, I think I'm happy. I would be happy with working with Christian. I like his rates, you know, I like his availability, you know, uh, I'm just going to save it to save him to my team. And when you can, uh, when Igor was showing you that how you can simply, you know, uh, assign a task to someone from your team, if I had the transition from English into Italian, Christian would come to the top of the list and make the task assignment much, much easier. You know, so this is something that we provide for you. You know, that makes it also uh, faster to uh, uh, assign tasks to uh, and to manage your uh, projects. And then one thing that we also offer, you know, as far as the uh, teams is concerned, is that if you work with uh, the same people uh, over and over, you know, we uh, we give you the option to create uh, what we call assignment templates, you know, so which, you know, you can see in my, uh, in my uh, account, I have a lot, of, uh, a lot of them. And you can say, for example, like, you know, for this one, uh, I have like, you know, people that, you know, in my team that will translate from English into French, English into Arabic, English, French into German. And if I were to start a project, you know, where I would need translators for those specific topics, uh, for the specific languages, and I would have worked with them in the past, I would have saved them into my team, you know, rather than having to assign individual tasks like Igor was showing you, you could use the assignment templates to assign all the different tasks all at once. You know? So, and that's, that would be a big advantage. Now. You could also, of course, work with your own uh, colleagues. You know, this is something that we uh, have, uh, we allow you to do, like, you know, bring, uh, invite uh, people into your uh, into your team. In SmartCat, is very simple. Uh, just click on the invite button here, and then you'll be able to add, you know, as many people as you want into your, uh, into your account. And this is something that should be said. That's a differentiator, I think, with SmartCat also, is that the, 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 uh, the model that we have is not based on number of users, number of licenses. You can invite as many people as you want into your account, you know, bring colleagues that need translation, be great colleagues, you know, that will help you with the, uh, uh the review of the, uh, transition as we were showing you. So, so this is really one of the differentiators, you know, uh, with smart cat, you need the ability to search, find people into the marketplace. And also, once again, we have a team that can help you. Like, you know, for example, if you wanted to test translators, if you want to screen translators, you know, this is part of the, uh, uh, the services that we offer. So that's it for me on my side there, Igor. Thank you so much, Jean-Luc. Uh, I think we went through all of the topics that we planned for today. Um, again, uh, if any of our attendees have any questions about SmartCat platform, about the topics that we covered today or something else, probably feel free to ask them. That's the right time to do so. Um, if you don't have any questions, well, you'll always know how to contact us and how to book a personal demo. So, um, where you might be more comfortable talking about your needs, your use case, your story, and how SmartCat can help you with, uh, translating your card. All right. Thank you, Jean-Luc and Igor. This was uh, a marathon session, but I think it really helped to give everybody a good snapshot of all of the different technologies. And much of this has been an evolution over the last 12 months or so. I mean, the platform itself has been around for quite a while as well, well established, but some of these incremental capabilities for video, for articulate, um, and of course, GPT is, is all new. So innovation is a big part of what we do. And this is a great example of that in action. I do see one question uh, from Mikhail. What's the main difference between the old layout and the new interface? That's a good one. All right. Yeah. If you are talking about our cat editor, we put a lot of effort to make it smoother, uh, better, you know, less rough around the edges. Um, so night mode, well, dark mode, something that people requested us uh, and we, we delivered that as well. Uh, at some point we provided, and I think it's still available as when you go to the new editor in our, and this is basically when you by default land, if you're new to SmartCat, you'll always view our new editing experience that we demonstrated today. Um, you have uh, a link in the, in the header that says like what's new in the editor. And we highlight all of the different features from, from layout to how filtering works, how we render things, etc. You can use different 
uh, rendering options as well. You can have, I don't know, like um, more compact view or more sparse view that for some people is easier to read. So there are lots and lots of smaller improvements and nicer UI overall. So I just encourage you to go through that document that has everything with, with screenshots. And also the workspace UI has changed also a lot. I think Mihal has been using the uh, smart cap for a while already. So uh, uh, anyway, so I think the UI is also uh, more friendly, you know, uh, keep things organized better. The project page is easier to use, you know, gives you more options to filter projects, you know, so uh, we definitely encourage you to 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 try the, the, the new UI compared to the old layout, especially if you've been using smart cap for a while. So. Great. All right. I just dropped the link into chat. If you want to schedule a demo now or in the future, easy to remember that URL, smartcat.com slash book a demo. It's also linked from the homepage of our website. Um, and again, thank you everybody for your participation. It's been, it's been a long day starting with Lock Talk and now the technology showcase. And thank you, John, Luke, and Igor for uh, taking us through this last section and wrapping it up. Um, so with that problem, we're always, always excited to, to showcase our product. So thank you for exactly. participating everyone. Great. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye. Bye.